Good morning. We are alive. Alive to perceive and witness a story being told. The story of our own life. When we begin witnessing our story from an out-of-body experience, from the third attention, from the dream of the impersonal point of view to take care of the love of our life no matter what happens in life. We're here to serve no matter what illusion comes or what separation story try to separate from one another, especially from the inner self. And then I begin having the awareness of what really a shapeshifter it is. A shapeshifter, they say in the superstition that you can transform yourself into whatever animal you want or to anything you want physically. It's just superstition. The real shapeshifting it is. When you have your story, your belief system, and you don't care to rule the world with it, but to understand with it. You put that belief system behind you and you begin witnessing what's in front of you, how people are having conversations, what people's belief they are, what is it they believe that they open their heart and close their heart. You know, if we want to rule with our story, we rule everybody is to feel safe, but we're safe no matter what because we have the love of our life and we are supporting the love of our life because everything, it is us. So when we begin witnessing this beautiful shape shifting dream, we begin to shape shifting. Let's see how they talk in this language. Let's see how they speak in this world because this world is not my world. I have to respect this world and how they live in. But I also have heart and mirrors. When we have heart and mirrors in life, we go everywhere just reflecting our true self. So many people, you know, project to other people what they're doing. Some other people, you know, are fearful and want to manipulate other people. So they do what they want them to do to feel safe. But in reality, one day we're not going to be here. And today I had a little funeral for my little friend. It was a little spider. But this little spider, you know, it was in my bathroom. It saw me. It's witness it began running the first time, but then later I left it alone because it wasn't only my space, it was the spider space, you know, and I was this big giant where he had fear. But little by little, I let it know I'm not the one you have to fear. I'm here as life as you are. I mind my own business, you mind your own business, the bathroom is ours, you know. But you know, every time I saw it, it gave me the reflection that I put out there, respecting its life. And today, you know, it was already passed, but it gave me a big lesson when he was alive and he has no awareness he did, but to respect life. Because if I can respect the little spider in the bathroom, life, how can I not respect my brothers and sisters' life in this world to let them believe what they want to believe? At the end of the day, we all have a guide. And the guide, it is our inner self that believes and trusts itself no matter what. That's why when you trust yourself and you live your life with no judgments, how can you be afraid of anybody's story? You begin being aware what story you don't want to live in, but that doesn't mean you have to live with fear. You just say, I don't want that. Could you imagine waking up this year especially, it's the year resolution they talk about, you know, <laughs> but you know, every day is a new year, every day is a new life. But what if you wake up today, seeing the story of your life, knowing that you can change it and make whatever you want of your story of your life to do whatever you want with it, to express yourself how you want to it, to love whoever you want to love, to be whoever you want to be. Remember, this life that we have is a gift. We don't have to give our gift away to somebody else. The life experience is for us. So let's say you want to dress a certain way and go out in the streets and just say, I'm happy dressing this way, go do it. It makes you happy, you know, just because it doesn't make other people happy or the other people who really want to do that. Hear me out. People who really want to do that and they don't dare to do that because they believe all these judgments, those are the people who will judge us. And I tell you this for experience. And at the end of the day, when you go to sleep and you did whatever you wanted to do in your heart and you didn't sacrifice it for nobody's fear, we're going beyond it in our own personal life. We're going beyond the fear to be perfect for our friends, for our spouses, for our beloveds, for our partners, for our family, you know, we're perfect just the way we are. Like Father said, I'm perfect with the mistakes that I have done in the past, the mistakes that I will do in the future, and the mistakes that I'm doing now. Because when I realize that I'm doing a mistake, I have the ability to change the story of my life, to change the character of my life, because that brings me awareness. I'll say, if you wake up having awareness in a relationship that is disrespectful to you, 
and that that inspires you to do the worst of you and then you fight with these people and it's a living nightmare if you have the ability to wake up from that dream with no personal attachment but feeling with love doesn't matter that, doesn't mean that you don't feel of course you feel of course we feel but to stand up for your ground and say I don't want to live this story anymore. I changed the character of my main story. And the new character of my main story, it will not sacrifice itself. It will not doubt itself. It will not sacrifice the things that it wants to do in life. On the contrary, the new character of my life, it says I can do whatever I put my mind into. Like Albert Einstein says, you know, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. With my imagination, we can find our passion. And when we put those two things together, it's like an explosion. Like when you put Diet Coke and Mentos, it does an explosion. So when we put the passion of our life into the things that, you know, we love to do and we take action, time stops. Why? Because we're having fun. Because we're enjoying. Because we're celebrating. And that's the real celebration of the shaman. Why do I say that? Because it's celebrating being alive. No longer celebrating being dead with a negative story. Poor me with my negative story. I want to come out and celebrate in the shaman's circle of drum. Yes, there was a point for that. But that can become an obsession to not live in trust like the jaguar spirit. So when you live in trust by the jaguar spirit, no matter what life throws at you, you know that it's still life. It has no big new things, no old new things. It's everything as it always has been. Emotion, feeling, action, reaction. So when we get our center and we begin witnessing all our creation, if we don't like our story anymore, it's time to give power to the main character of this story and change it because that's our hero. And guess what? The hero is not outside of us. We're not waiting for a knight in shining hour to save us in a fancy horse, you know. Forget that someone else's story and our story is life that saved us it's life that inspired us and what are we brothers and sisters life and I just say brothers and sisters because that's how I was domesticated to call you guys but I know that you're just another part of me like if I was a cell in a body and you were another cell in that body we know that we're both working for the same body and in this world, we're working for the same energy. We're working for the same boss. So the garden of dreams, the garden of dreams is how I see the dream of the planet. The garden of dreams is me dreaming and putting my dreams in the table. It's you dreaming, putting your dreams in the table, and it's a garden. This table becomes a garden. Now, what is our dream and what is not our dream? The dream of the planet is a living whole being that creates and sucks energy. And the more we create with the energy and put it in there, it's a most creative dream. One day we're not gonna be here, but we're here right now. So what do we want to offer to the table? What do we want to offer to the sacred ceremony? What do we want to offer to the transformation that it will be in an act of power, realizing stories that doesn't serve us anymore so we can get those stories, disintegrate them straight to the wind and whatever is left of that story is the memory. So the memory will be the lessons of wisdom that we will put together in our own experience and go and shape shift. I haven't forgot about the shape shifting. We go shape shifting to our brothers and sisters, to our allies, to our tribe, the reflection they have forgotten. Because it's the act of power where we shape shift, where we put our story behind and just listen how that world dreams and little by little, it's not psychic powers. No, it's just the ability of trusting the body, what it's telling you. It's not a big deal. We really don't have to study this. You just have to take the action to feel the body, how it's communicating with you beyond the word. Once you begin feeling that life force, you can be, begin being aware of all the acts that you do that goes against your body or supports your body. Make your body nervous or anxious, or make your body inspired and powerful. So, you know, our emotions, they're here for us forever. Let's live with them. Just like when I was living with a little spider in my bathroom, I don't want to quiet my emotions or pretend it's not there. It's there. You know, the negativity in this world, I don't pretend it's not there. It's there. I was a slave to it. It consumed me. It consumed me and programmed me domesticated me to do the same thing 
that I was judged and I began judging. So I was lost in that world. And then I woke up because I followed the Jaguar and the Jaguar was in my head and it was in my mind. I took that image of the Jaguar because my jungle was my mind. And that is what I needed to survive, my own mind. Because my mind was full of lies and wounds that they were stopping me, paralyzing me with the spirit of the Jaguar. It's pure love. And what does it love? It's cub. Because the moment the Jaguar gives birth to a new Jaguar, the whole reality changes. It is like when we have awareness and we living in suffering and we pass this teaching to somebody else because somebody else, a new apprentice or a child is in front of us. The addiction of suffering becomes so clear. Are we going to give this little cub or this little creature, or this little human, the same poison that we give to ourselves every day and every night? And that's when we wake up saying, no, it's time to change our dream. It's time to change our story to whatever we believe in. And the point is to not become obsessed and fanatic is to use the story, knowing that it's just a story. It's not the ultimate truth, because inside those stories we'll find gems and tools that we will use to change and work on, on our own individual dream. Because at the end of the day, my imagination is not yours, and your imagination is not mine. That's our own gift, individually. And that's where I call heaven. Could you imagine having the awareness that you have the gift to imagine whatever you want to imagine, to dream and to allow yourself to dream without judgment, knowing that there is no censorship, there is no stopping, there's no red flags, there is no fear stopping you, or where your dreams can lead you and take you to manifest something in this world to bring it into fruition and share it with your brothers and sisters. And that's the art, the art from the heart. That's why I know that I live in a garden of dreams and everybody's dreaming in that dream. And everything is perfect. There's no worse or better than, it's just pain suffering and happiness what channel of the source of energy do you choose because we all have excuse and justification i remember when i was in vegan and i'm not here to transform anybody it is my own personal individual dream because i was sick i was sick in my body if i didn't follow this i would probably not be dead so i listened to my body it was time to unlearn my old ways but anyways going into this way of life i begin seeing how even that dream is so corrupted when you begin having this dream to take care of life inside of you, inside and out, it's not that you want to be validated or you give yourself a label. It's something that you do because, you know, you have this choice to take care of your body. Why not take it? And when you begin being loyal to you, that gives you strength. So let's say I'm five years now into this in a commitment. I'm committing, giving my word to take care of the love of my life in my own personal dream. And I used to hear all the justifications, all these excuses are why not to, you know? Why not to, you know, especially the one, I am a Jaguar spirited, you know, I supposed to eat. No, it was just an excuse. When it, things don't feel good to me anymore, it's time to let it go. Like when I don't feel good in a relationship anymore, it's time to let it go. And when I say relationship, I don't mean a romantic relationship, I mean any kind of relationship that is sabotaging. And this is the important thing of doing. When something doesn't serve you anymore, to have the epiphany, the awareness, that doesn't serve your body anymore. It's time to let it go. And believe me, they judge before I was vegan. They judge me when I'm vegan and they will judge me after, you know, if I'm not vegan anymore. They, they, people would just love to judge. That's the same thing, you know. The other day, a friend of mine, you know, came, came out and he was saying how the family didn't appreciate them and he was using that, the family to hurt what it really wants. But I said, you know, that's their dream. It's not your dream. Your dream, it is to be you to be open-hearted. And I tell you one thing, they're just living in their own dream, a judgment or scare, whatever they believe in. It's not yours, you can never understand what they're going through. But look around the smoke, around past the illusion, they're still alive. You love them, they love you. Don't focus on a story that separates you. Like in these elections, how many people separated each other because of politics and we're family, you know? How come Another dream is more powerful than other dream. And it goes on and on and on and on. And, you know, I remember one day that I was sitting in the jungle and I began noticing the moon. And the moonlight is the goddess inside the there, Ikshel, the goddess of the Mayan dream, the princess. So she lives in the moon. 
and I was witnessing that and also seeing a beautiful bunny inside that moon. And then I had this whole movie playing in my head, a dream. And I was dreaming that I was climbing this mountain and I was climbing it so roughly, I almost fell, but I made it to the top. And when I made it to the top, I saw this beautiful cave and, uh, and with my hands, it was in there and I began doing this, like if my hands were flashlights and I was flashing everywhere. And then all of a sudden my cave was illuminated that I come out of the cave. And then I was on the edge of the rocks, the big mountain. And I saw the whole forest in front of me, like if it was an ocean of green. And then I see the top and I see the infinite stars, the infinite sky, the infinite colors of oxygen in the sky floating. And I begin perceiving the star. And I didn't know if the star was perceiving me. I was perceiving the star and said, oh my, I'm inside of one of my father's books. And then, I, and then the trees begin breathing. And you know, it was, everything was coming inside of me. And then two little children, pull my clothes, my, my, my sweater, and said, are you our uncle? What are you doing it? And how are you doing it? And then when they said that to me, I had a whole memory when I was little and my father was inside of a cave and illuminated with his words. And then he was in a mountain and he said, I don't know if the stars are perceiving me. I'm perceiving the stars. And I am the lungs of the trees or the trees of the forest are inside of me. And I asked my father, how you do that? And he asked me, do you really want to know my son? And me without knowing what I was saying yes to, I said, yes. And this is when the vision began. I imagine that he threw me out of the mountain saying me, I love you so much. And a water broke my fall. And when I was drowning in the water, someone saved me. And when I came out, I wanted to tell this somebody who saved me, but there was nobody around. So in my dreams, I begin screaming, who saved me, who saved me? And the trees begin whispering, it was the river. It was the river. The river saved you. And said, okay, I'm going to look for the river. And they said that in the river, there was a holy person, a wise person called the river man, said, I want to learn everything from this person. So. I began looking in my dream for this person and never found it. And after months, years, I was tired. I sat under a tree and I closed my eyes, all, you know, giving up. And then I hear these steps. The branches of the trees in the floor are breaking. And as I come close, I open my eyes and it's this little old man with a cane, with a long white beard and white long hair and a hat and says, are you looking for the river man? I hear the forest whispered to me too, that you, someone is looking for the river man. And I said, are you the river man? And the old man began laughing, 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 and said, if you think I'm the river man, you're far away from the river man. And then I began being so sad, I will never find the river man. Do you know any story about the river man? Well, I know a story for a river man, and it happened long time ago. So I sat down, with the old man as he began telling the story. And as he began telling the story, I closed my eyes and I was in a dream, inside of a dream. And then I began witnessing from the sky point of view. It was me and the old man talking in the clouds with nobody at all, but we were just witnessing life. And it was this beautiful couple in the old Mayan land, in old Chichen Itza. And it was so beautiful because it was too beautiful people just loving each other since childhood playing they don't care about the superstition or whatever they're doing inside that tribe you know they just care to play and they grew up they got married and one time the the older man the one that was the partner of the the woman came back from work and the whole village was painted in blue the door where they live was painted in blue that means that the priests have come and taken people to get sacrificed for the gods and of course he went to his house heartbroken that he wasn't there he went running to the main temple and just saw her body took a piece of cloth and was so upset with the whole Mayan tradition that he began losing it and you're all full of superstition your fear you're ruled by fear I have nothing to do with you anymore he was so upset he left the tribe of the Mayans and he was lost for a long time. Then, in one of the 
meditations he was having. He was so weak. He didn't feed himself. He went into the river at night and he saw the moonlight and fell, hit his head. And then he had the image of his beloved. She came to him and he was so happy. He says, my love, you come to me. I give you my word. I will never leave you alone. I will always protect you. I'm here with you. I will never leave your sight. And she said, no, my love, I'm coming to say goodbye. The path you've taken, it is in a dark hole of infinite void where nothing, light has will of its own. You're going through darkness and you see me with you. I come here to say goodbye. In that moment, something happened to the man because love came. Real love opened his eyes. And the real love saying, I love my beloved so much that I'm hurting myself. This is not the way to love her. The way to love her is to take care of this body, of her beloved. Because this is who she loves. This is who I am. This is who I love. And then he came out of the water. He breathed. And the first thing that it looked was the moon shining down on him. And he saw the goddess Ixchel. And he saw life there. It's my infinite. I will live my life. Do my purpose in this life. As you have made your purpose, you woke me up, my love. I will serve you in everywhere I see life because you are my goddess. You are my queen. You are my life. In that moment, he became the river man, a powerful priest of the Mayan tradition because he saw the whole dream. He returned back to his place and he was a Nagual. And across the sea, in Spain, they live a wise, powerful man called the good Spaniard, because he's always loyal to God and his queen. He was retired. The queen asked him, we have found new land. I would like you to get a, you know, a, a boat of boats and go lead them to the new land. He said, of course, my queen. You ask me, I will do. So the Spaniard went, the conquistadors went to the new land to, to invade. And the first thing that the riverman, the, the, not the riverman, the Spaniard saw, the good Spaniard began seeing how they were treating everybody how are treating women, children. And he said, I don't want no part of this. This is no honor. He took the armor off, the sword off, and he let it go and he went on his own. Well, it didn't take long for him to get trapped. He got trapped, he got tortured, and he got left to not eat, you know, left to die in a little box. And then the river man, the wise, you know, priest, felt that energy, went and saved the Spaniard from the Mayans, took him to his village and gave him food, Gave him, you know, nourishment, got him back. And then they begin to communicate. They both started to learning each other's language. Now the good Spaniard speak Mayan. And they were intrigued with each other's worlds because they were both have living in integrity. So the riverman began teaching the way of the shamanism, the Nahualism to the Spaniard. And he was so intrigued. And they took him to the top of a mountain where he found his epiphany and took him to the river where we found his goddess. And he explained his whole story about forgiveness. And the Spaniard was just in awe. His heart was never been this open before the clarity of the whole life in the divine. So when they went back home, they found that the, you know, the Spaniard has been hiding, escaping. He's been hiding there. So they burned the whole village. So the Spaniard felt so guilty. He says, kill me, take my life. He said, why? They killed your family. Life for life. No, you don't understand. Everything I've been teaching you is not only about the Spaniard and the Mayan separated. It's about togetherness. Don't, here, let me take you to the top of the mountain. They took them to the top of the mountain. They made a beautiful ceremony for the loved ones, knowing that they're in a better place. But he was teaching now the Spaniard. How does it matter what civilization you come from, what world you come from, what you know, tribe you come from? There's negativity and positivity in every in race. In every land, there is that dream of the infectiousness of the greed, and that's the fungus of the human mind. When they feel fear, grow something about insecurity. They want to possess worlds. Nothing is enough because their God is the God of war. So we make peace right now, and that's the most beautiful honoring that the river man was sharing, the old man was sharing to the young man. That was me. He was sharing the story that two civilizations that fight each other can make peace because there's goodness in all of them. And each tribe is a whole world. So in every person there's goodness and there's wounds. 
So when we begin shape shifting in life, when seeing this, we can transform our whole life. And in that moment, the the young man, which is me in the story, woke up and he was so happy because he has the epiphany. He hasn't had to find the river man to learn from him because he already gave him the most beautiful gift, another chance to live life. And of course, the old man wasn't there anymore. He disappeared. So he began saying, thank you, old man. Thank you. I don't care to meet the river man anymore. You saved my life. And the trees begin whispering in gratitude. So he went to the river where he fell, you know, when the life broke his fall. And he looked into the river and he found the river man. Because the young man, when he kissed the ground with gratitude to be alive, and when he came and kissed the ground, he saw the moonlight shining. And when he saw the moonlight shining, it was a beautiful image because he saw the goddess Ixchel inside the moon, but he also saw something powerful. The bunny that's inside the moon, it was the river man. The energy that protects the goddess in this lifetime. And it's a symbol like a flag on top of a sky. The moon has a little rabbit and a goddess inside, which represents no different from the Virgin of Guadalupe and the little angel. No different from, you know, the Hindu goddess and the tiger. It is the energy that is ruthless. That is the jaguar protecting the cub. And then the young man in the story felt the completion. And as he looked down, he found the river man. He found who saved him from the river. Because the moon was reflecting the water. And the water became a mirror. So it was always itself. <clears throat> he woke up and said, thank you to life climbed the mountain and said, I don't know if the stars are perceiving me or I'm not perceiving the stars. Went inside the cave, which is its own mind, and with the light illuminated the whole cave. And then it's when the little children came. Uncle, what are you doing and how are you doing it and why are you doing it? And the uncle responded, do you really want to know? And this is a story about life, the story about the ancient ones. We get lost by the dream, by the wounds, but then we have an epiphany to resurrect and change our story. Now let's say, imagine that I'm in the middle of a river and I'm seeing what the river, you know, gave me. It gave me this beautiful ring, let's say. It represents a whole life and I'm nurturing it, but all of a sudden there's an earthquake. I lose my balance and the current of the river is so strong that I drop it and I drop it and then the, the current take it away. So I'm turning behind me to see what the river took away. People come to me and says, Jose, Jose, come back to life. No, 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 you don't understand. The river took this away from me. When am I going to have the realization that the river took something away from me because something is about to come to me? And if I focus my attention to what river took away, I will be a victim complaining what life took away from me instead of what life is bringing me today. And what life is bringing me today is a new story, a new opportunity to grow, to make a new agreement love in my life and this is the story of my own dream like you have the story of your own dream but imagine if we take the opportunity to open up and take care of our garden of our own individual garden and then go into the table into the garden of dreams and put our dreams together this is the elders way the elders desired wish and the elders wish is for one humanity to become one the first thing we need to do is to become one in our own head, to be impeccable with our word. And with our impeccability of the word, see the story of our life and make the decision. Make the decision. What are we going to support in our life? And what are we going to stop supporting? This is the Jaguar's way. Taking care of the jungle, the mind. So what the river took away, let's give gratitude. Because if they didn't take it away, it means they would never come to us. Like the river took away, you know, a few uncles this year. It took away my grandparents. It took away my stepmother, my best friend. But they're here. I make the best out of it because, like I said the last time, when you have 500 ancestors walking behind you, it's very important that you take care of yourself, that you take care of the body of your love because who wants to put your ancestors in a cage within you? I let my ancestors free as I let myself free honoring them. And when I honor them, I honor myself. 
we all will wake up from this illusion sooner or later. But when I say to you, once you wake up, you can never go back to sleep. And your love will guide you to never doubt your love. Your love is the light that illuminates the caves. Your light is the one that illuminates and becomes one with everything. You know, many people say, Jose, I love your energy. You have strong energy. It's just respect. When you have respect, you have the celestial fire to connect with other celestial fire and become one fire, one dream. And here we are illuminating our own path. The river man, the river woman is ourselves. When we find the strength in ourselves, knowing that it's not in the story, we don't need no story to be free. What we need is the story to inspire us for the motivation to make our life a masterpiece of us. And the art inside of us will be expanded like a projector everywhere you go. Could you imagine there's a walking projector inside of you and it's projecting love wherever you go? That is your presence. So when your loved ones see you happy, that is your true essence. Hear what I mean? When the wounds get us, it's real. It's real. But if we keep putting more firewood into the flame, the wounds will only become bigger. And it's time to stop supporting the false idols, the fake gods. I'm not talking about religious persons, no. I'm talking about stories that don't allow us to expand anymore. I will no longer support story. Poor Jose, you got abused. Oh, poor Jose, you were drug addict. Oh, poor Jose, poor you. No, forget that. All that made me strong to find the Jaguar medicine to overcome whatever I need to overcome to take care of the love of my life because I'm a character in this story of life that has his own will to change his own story when he needs self-support. And guess what? I have good news. You also have that strength that will, when you decide to have that determination to let go of whatever is stopping you, because you have your own cave to illuminate. And the time is now, and we're ready for the change. Forget a special date to take action. The special date is when you realize it, and there is no time to waste, because time is the most precious thing in this beautiful life because when there's time we're still here because this is the dream of time the dream of patience plant a seed go and do something else but be turned to nurture it give it love and it will grow and one day we will not be here physically but the seed that we planted it will still be here because that's life because we're life fed by life feeding life creating life it's all us. The Jaguar is home. When you breathe inside, attach. And when you're ready to detach, let that breath go. And the air has stories too. Don't suffocate with one story. Your heart is meant to shine for a whole lifetime. It's not about age when the candle burns because when we want transformation, when the candle is still lit, there's still time to make this change. And the lit candle, it has the symbol of life. And our candle is lit, full of love, celestial fire, and support. And remember, shape shifting is important. Shape shifting is to understand other worlds, other dreams inside this whole world <laughs> because every mind is a world so there's seven billions of dreams seven billions point of view of the truth and that's the whole respect for the artist have everybody have their point of view and respect it so ours can be respected as well and when we know our story will not respect it in a situation why talk about it at all when people debate sometimes it will not go anywhere when people witness, inspiration is about to grow, like a pyramid above another pyramid above another pyramid. And to this pyramid, it is all about the gratitude to being alive. Because when you're grateful to be alive, then your story will be a masterpiece of art 
a story that you don't want to ever run away from because it's all your story. And you hear that, how powerful it is to not want to run away from your own story that you created? <laughs> love your story. Love your life. Love for life. And when we have love for life, it equals freedom because we will not waste it or sacrifice it for anything. We will protect life like it's a jungle. And the jungle is inside of our mind. That's why I use the, the analogy, the metaphor of the jaguar. Not because I give my power to the jaguar, because the jaguar doesn't even know that I'm alive. <laughs> the jaguar does what he wants to do. I'm just using it to inspire myself. And I can't wait for this year to introduce the new Power Animal books to everybody for the Chaman Trilogy books. And I'm just full of gratitude for another opportunity to serve our queen. And our queen is Mother Earth. And it all begins within us in the outside. So let the river flow. Let the river run. Let the river take away whatever is going to take away. And let the river bring whatever is going to bring us today. And we will accept it and let go with love and understanding. Remember, we don't have to have a garage or a closet full of stuff that we don't use. No, let, let go of that. Let's fill that space with things that we use. Things that make us motivate ourselves. And when we're done with that, we continue. That's why I love the San Mandala ceremony, the Tibetan San Mandala. They spend days, hours, making with dust of colors, this beautiful, you know, image of the doorway to to the infinite. I don't know, it's just beautiful, you know, like flowers. But then when they're done, they do a prayer and go. The same thing is about life. Our life is a San Mandala. We do everything so beautifully created, but at the end, we let it go because our soul is not in the art. A piece of it is because we created it, but it's not there. The source that created our art is not there. The source of our art is our spirit. So whatever life takes away pieces of art, paintings, it's okay, let it go. You can still paint more in life. Hear what I mean? You can still create. You can still create a new story for your life. The one that you're protecting doesn't serve you anymore. It's, called, it's when you have a bad tooth and that bad tooth is hurting you. Why do you want to keep that bad tooth putting poison all around you? Say, thank you for everything you did to me. But it's time for you. The service has ended. Put sleep. And this is when we realize how things of service have ended in even material things in our life. This car, I had it for 10 years. Okay, thank you for everywhere you took me. It's just a metaphor. Because this body also is one of the greatest vehicles why? Because it allows us to feel love. I'm grateful to this body because it allows me to feel love. If something bad happened today, okay, it happened something bad, but I still feel love, so I'm still grateful <laughs> for another opportunity to be alive. Remember, shape shifting is not about changing your face. It's about holding your story and not invading it and into new stories. And then later you can translate from the heart. Well, I let you... I've already <laughs> talked a lot today <laughs> and I feel so gratitude for this new year, a time for a new story, a time for a new dream, and a time for this character of the story to live its dreams. Om Eteo, Om Sairam, Shiva Shakti, to spirit, Amen. I see you next Monday. All my love, gratitude. Remember, plant a seed and a seed will grow. A seed will grow to become the art that you offer to life. We are the seeds, and when we take action, we have something to give to the altar of life. I give from our heart. Quali, quali.